Good morning. On the bench this morning we have another Kenwood TS940S HF transceiver. And I've worked on several of these over the past few years and this one is showing a couple of faults that I wanted to show you. When you turn it on you see there's no display. It's just bars and dots across it. And the first thing people think when they see this is the PLL has gone out. And you can see the screen just flashed and comes back. But one thing I want to show you also on the sub band is showing Trio Kenwood. We'll shut it off. Turn it back on. And now you see it showing something different. And if you look real closely, you might be able to see this in the camera. You can see that the display or the main is flashing um, very rapidly. Just showing a few things. So, uh, yeah, the first impression would be the PLL was going out, but I don't think that is the main reason of this fault. I think what we need to do is go in and look a little further. I'm looking at the disassembly of the service manual. We notice the PLL unit is going to be down in the bottom. But I think what well, we need to concentrate at on this radio looking for the problem is going to be here on the digital unit. And the reason for this is that the digital unit does a lot of controlling in the radio. And the first impression was seeing the subband doing what it's doing. That's not really a sign of a PLL issue. I have the top cover removed. And what we'll need to do is remove the speaker and just control assembly. And then we can get down to the uh, digital unit and below that we'll find the PLL unit. So now we have that removed, we'll have to remove the DC to DC unit. There's six screws that holds the digital unit in. I find it easier to go ahead and remove the top cover and then you got wire connectors all the way around the three sides of uh, this unit and this one here at the top it's a lot easier to get those connectors off with the top cover removed gives you a little more space to work in the digital unit is now removed and sitting over here on the side to get to the PLL you'll need to remove four screws from this shielded plate and then you can lift it out and there is your PLL unit and several things to look for in this radio is these wire connectors they'll tarnish and corrode and uh, cause a lot of issues just in the connectors to sell um, down on the small coaxials these plugs or F plugs will tarnish and cause a lot of issues but today I think the main concern we're going to look at is the digital unit when I removed the digital unit I thought I felt something that felt a little loose on the board so you can see there's a shield around this and it's sorted through and as you can see the sorter has completely come com loose from the shield so the shield is no longer sorted to the board so just looking at the board with a naked eye you really can't see a whole lot that's wrong with it um, even with trying to zoom in with my camera I can't get a good focus to really show the problems so I'm going to put this under the microscope and give you a better view. 
So here on the center of the screen under the microscope you can see that the solder is completely cracked from around the pin that goes on the shield. And this is holding the shield in place. As you see it's completely cracked and there's no solder attaching it to it. Um, so we're going to get in there and look at a few other things. So I wanted to show you this example here. If you look you can tell how dull the solder is around these pins and this is a sign of cold solder joints another thing if you look at you can see here I hope you can see this on the camera this shows how big the hole size is and then how small your component lead is so they're having to fill up the hole to uh, connect the pin and it can develop cracks around here that you can't see show you this with the light on so in this frame we can see more cold solder joints so what we'll do we'll cut the light off and with the light off you can see if you look around the next to the last pin you can see cracks in the solder if you look in the very last pin, you see cracks in the solder. And as we scan around, you can see the same thing on these pins. So with that, it looks like we have a lot of sort of repairing to do on the digital unit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit some of those and I'll get back with you. Okay, I have the digital unit all soldered up. Cleaned all the flux out. Got it installed. I had one connector that was missing. So someone had soldered the two wires to the pins. So I got the correct part and installed it and put that back on. Now, I'm not expecting this to completely fix the radio. I know it's still going to be some other problems, but you'll, I think you'll see that the flashing is now gone. So we're going to power it on and see what we have. And, yes, no more flashing. And you can see we do not have dots. But we have no information being displayed. We have the meter scale and a few things linting up. And over on the sub band. Let's see if there's anything. There's nothing on the sub band. Let's go power it down. Power it back up. There. Now the sub band has come up. And everything is all zeros. So that's a good sign. So the next thing now is to tear it back apart and start on the PLL unit. I don't suggest doing it all at the same time. Um, this way you can do a little bit and you can check and uh, then try it. It ain't that hard to get in and out of. So uh, we'll go ahead and pull the PLL unit out and have a look at it. Okay, after a few tests, uh, I haven't pulled the PLL board out yet, but I decided to do a uh, reset. And after doing a few tests, I think that rest of the problem will be in the PLL board. I'm going to do the reset again, and you watch what comes up on the screen. As you see for a moment we had a frequency readout. So we're gonna turn it off and do it one more time. Yep, coming up at 1400 megahertz. So uh, and as you can see you got the dots all the way across. So yeah. PLL board it is. 
So we're going to pull that out and probably spend another two hours sorting it up and see what we come out with. So I removed the PLL boarding, did some sorting on it, found some bad sort of joints and went ahead and hit through it most of the time. But as you see, we still have the dock problem until we rotate the VFO knob. If you look over here at the sub display, we now see that it works. We can scroll through. So all that's working. All the front panel buttons are working now, which was not working before. So it still looks like we have an unlock failure. So I'm going to have to dig deeper into the uh, PLL board. I might have to pull the uh, front panel board and check all those connections on those wires on it. Um, one thing that Kenwood had mentioned in a service bulletin was to remove IC2 off of the digital board and uh, remove the socket and sort of the chip directly to the board. This is already done. I spent about an hour doing that a little bit ago. So uh, we still got more digging to do. Catch you back in a short. So it's now Saturday and I spent most of the day going through this radio, disconnecting every connector in the radio, cleaning the pins, checking the wires, resealing them, and uh, still I have the same issue. Display comes up and then quickly goes away. Now. On the PLL board, connector number five, and that wire harness goes to the control board. I have noticed that if I disconnect this one connector, the display comes on and stays on. It does not shut back down, um, even though the radio still does not work. But uh, I thought that was pretty interesting to see. So here we're looking directly at the PLL board. Over on the right side, facing the front of the radio, is connector number two. Uh, my notes say that you disconnect connector two, go to connector five, pin five, and check the voltage. And if the voltage is high, it says you need to go to the carrier board and look for the unlock. So that's what we'll do now. So I have cable 2 disconnected. And we're going to go to cable plug number 5 and check pin 5. And we're showing 4.89 volts. So if the information I have is correct, this is telling me that there is a problem on the carrier board. So my notes also tell me to check various pins on different ICs to see if the um, PLLs are running. So uh, this is also on the PLL board. So the first one we're going to go to is IC8 pin 2. And what we're looking for is 1 volt and above. So on pin 2 of IC8, we're showing about 0.8 volts. So we'll go to pin IC9, pin 2, and we're showing 4.7 volts. Back to IC19, pin 2. And it's now showing 1.66 volts. And then I see 17 pin 2. It's showing 2.7 volts. 
So the one that really concerns me the most is IC8 pin 2. It's showing down 0.7 volts. So it's kind of changing up and down. So that does make me think that something in that PLL area is not working right. This is the one, the PLL just above it, that has all the wax inside. I've already reflowed the uh, sorter connections under the bottom of the can. But the problem is with this wax can seep up through the holes when you're sorting it and wick around your component and still not make a good connection. So I might have to go in and remove all this wax out and resort those connections and try it again. Now another thing that really bothers me about working behind someone else is trying to figure out what they have done to the radio. What mods have they done to the radio and what have they changed around and did not put back the way it's supposed to be. And if you notice a while ago I told you when you lift connector 5 from the PLL board the display shows up even though the radio still will not receive like this. But this is some things I wanted to show you that someone has done. When I decided to fo follow the uh, harness that goes from connector 5 on the PLL, it comes down to connector 21 and 23. As you can see, connector 23, the wire has been cut completely off of it. Also, there was no connector on 21. And you can see that the two wires are sort of directly to the pins. So I'm not sure how many wires are supposed to be here. Now I do notice that there are two wires that are sorted together and run through a piece of heat shrink. Also up on the top board see if I can find this thing trust me it's here here we go you can see this connector has been moved and the wires have been soldered directly to the pins with heat shrink around them now this one looks better than the one below this one here looks like somebody actually knew what they were doing and decided to do away the connector and sort it directly to the pins. So the radio still has a lot of problems. And there's something in here I'm not quite finding. So I think I'm going to end this video and call it part one as an overview. And uh, I'm going to do some more digging and searching and see what else we can come up with. I did notice a uh, kind of a charred looking resistor up here on this board. It doesn't look burnt, but I'll check it and see. So uh, like I say we'll call this part one and we'll get back on it and I'll do some more studying on it. We'll catch you next time.